Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This first little short one is going to be what would have been Saturday's message. So let's hop right into it. It's 1 Kings chapter 7, a very long 51 verse chapter detailing how Solomon's house and parts of the temple were built. Lots and lots and lots of details. I'm really, yeah, I'm actually not going to bother reading much of anything. I'll read verse 51, just kind of like the capstone, the end of it. So all the work that King Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and the furnishings. He put them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. And again, all I can say is, you know, read the chapter for yourself and trust me. Do a little bit of both. Of course, if you don't want to trust me, Primarily, read the chapter for yourself, and it details a lot of what Solomon did for his own house and the building of it as well. And the first thing that crossed my mind after I finished reading the chapter was, all of this came about through something not that the Lord authored, like the tabernacle back in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. This has to do with just David's desire to please the Lord and help him out. Help him out. Poor choice of words. Just to honor him. That's a better choice of words. He just wanted to honor the Lord. And the Lord was like, well, I've never commanded anyone to do this. But all right, you want to honor me with this? Go for it. Except for it won't be you. It'll be your son. But sure, go ahead and do that. And it's just kind of cool that something that the Lord didn't command to be done, the Lord still respected, honored, and an entire long chapter in the Bible was devoted to it. And, my fr and so I'm thinking to myself, well, the Lord didn't author this. You know, he honored it. Like David wanted to honor him, so the Lord honored him back, I guess you could say. And I was like, and my first thought was, you, a lot of these chapters where it's like detail after detail, honestly, even reading the tabernacle, a little bit on the boring side. Reading Leviticus, the law of the Lord, that doesn't bore me personally. I find all of those intricate details rather interesting because it's detailing how the priests were to perform their duties, what was right, what was wrong, what was clean, what was unclean. I find those kind of details relatively interesting personally, although I realize that many do not. And then the first eight or nine chapters of First Chronicles when it's just genealogy after genealogy after genealogy and a summation of all the genealogies up to that point, I find that rather boring as well. There are some spots in the Bible, let's be honest, they're a little on the boring side. Well, as I went through this particular boring section of the Bible, I thought to myself, it's, isn't it kind of odd that the Lord decided to put all of this in Scripture? I mean, this wasn't even something He directly commanded to be done. It was simply something that one of His servants, one of the men that followed Him in the past, decided that they would do. And it was still measured in excruciating detail how it was done. It's, well, I use the word measure. Yeah, the measurements of the temple. And all this was written down. And was it really necessary to write down someone's fan project? Yeah, the Lord okay, but was it really necessary to write down someone's fan project for the Lord? Something that didn't originate from him. Does that make sense? I hope it makes some sense. Because a lot of my point comes from that point. The main point of this message is this. While I was saying to myself, yeah, someone's fan project took up a, a really long, big chapter of scripture, you know, apparently the Lord thought it was important enough to put in His Word. And the correlation, and this is a personal thing, I guess, you know, look at your own life and see what you've done, what you've chosen to do. I chose to do YouTube. It wasn't something I felt called of the Lord to do. I never felt called of the Lord to do YouTube. I felt it would be okay. I'm not doing anything bad or anything wrong. In fact, I'm doing messages like this that glorify the Lord via YouTube. And the Lord's okay with it. He doesn't have a problem with it. And I just, I want, you know, the Lord basically said, yeah, Brandon, go ahead and do YouTube. He's honoring that because this is what I wanted to do. And I, I'm not going to get a Bible chapter or anything, but the Lord honored what I wanted to do. He okayed it. It didn't come from Him, but He okayed it. 
And I just think that's really, really cool. Like, the Lord, if he would take an entire chapter to talk about something that he didn't originally do himself, but it was simply something that someone did to honor him, will not the Lord also take into remembrance and think kindly and positively on my wanting to do YouTube for him, this entire channel, and all that I'm doing here? It's something that the Lord will look upon and smile he'll think kindly upon and whether even though it won't be in the bible you know in his book that um is written in heaven for about all of history about all of his children there will be a section on my youtube career and i just i per i don't know if it'll last as long as solomon's building of the temple seven years i'd like it to last that long we'll see if it lasts that long but i just think it's really cool that <laughs> that the Lord takes the things that we choose to do, not necessarily the things that he told us to do, and he still thinks positively on that. He still thinks kindly on those things. And I just think that's really, really awesome. So, yeah. What are you choosing to do for the Lord? Maybe he didn't command you to do it, but what are you doing just to please him, just to honor him? Like I'm doing these little messages on YouTube to honor him. I'm having fun with my video games. I'm also making a message a day. Most of them short. Sunday, coming up after this will be a 30-minute message. It'll be longer. But it's honoring Him, and the Lord cares about that. So what will, you know, what have you done, or what will you do? Not necessarily a command of the Lord, but just something to honor Him, something to point towards Him, that the Lord will smile upon and care about and loves that it came from the heart of one of His children. That's really precious and special to me. Because he cares about the things that we choose to do. Even if it didn't necessarily come as a direct commandment from him. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.